A very good morning to all of you. Salamat sa Ginoo for this brand new day nga iya ginhatag sa aton and sa pagsugod sa sining adlaw. Salamat sa Dios nga masugdan ini naton sa pagbukad tig sa pagpamalandong sang iya nga pulong. Sa sining aga ayhan iban sa inyo nagapangapina dira kung diin man ikaw nga parte kun bahin sa inyo nga balay I hope nga you are seated comfortably kag ready na sa pagpamalandong naton sa sining ation. Now this morning, gusto ko kamo pagadalon sa isa ka very familiar ng story in the Old Testament, particularly in the Book of Exodus. Amo ni siya ang story niya kung sa diin ginlagas ni Pharaoh ang mga Israelites nga na corner dito sa banks ng Red Sea. Now we will be focusing our attention this morning in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. Pagabasahon ko sa inyo sa King James version. Verse 13 says. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Tutod sa ginoo, naka-experience siya ka na balasang moment o kontiyon si imong kabuhi niya kung sa diin pamatsag mo ang imong sitwasyon ka-hopeless yun. Ay hanti on si mga kabuhi that you feel trapped. Hindi ka nakabalo kung ano ang desisyon niya imo pagahimoon. You are running out of options. You are running out of people to call to for help. Hindi ka nakabalo kung ano imo himoon. Now think of that moment for, think of that instance for a moment. And try to remember, ano bala ang mga panguna-huna mo na hanungod sa ginoo during that time? What were your thoughts of God? During the time, well, kung nakaagi ka na sa amos na ang experience yah that you feel trapped, that you thought ngang imo nga circumstance yah kahopeless naged, amun na ang exact na situation yah kung sa diin na talo pang dan sa mga Israelites kaupod ni Moses ang ilang na kauglingon in this passage. Now, when some of us are very familiar with the story, but let me remind you sang sang context, sang 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 background sang sining story. Si Pharaoh na pilitan siya na i-release ang mga Israelites as God commanded after naging plague sa ginoo ang Egypt na paagi sa kay Moses. But kabalo kita that after naging release na ni Pharaoh ang mga Israelites, nag-change ang iyang mind. Now Pharaoh wanted the Israelites back in Egypt. So what did Pharaoh do? Gin-gather niya ang tanan-tanan niya na best nga chariots with all the horsemen and with 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 many of his soldiers to run after the Israelites. Maybe some of you are wondering, ano gid ka strong ang military sa Egypt during that time? Well, just to give you an idea of how strong and how vast the, these soldiers nga naglagas sa mga Israelites during that time, Egypt was the first country to breed and train and use horses for war. Egypt ang first nga country nga nagamit sang chariots sa battle. And according sa verse 7, 600 gid ka best nga chariots ni Pharaoh ang iya gin gather kag para langson ang mga Israelites. Wala pa na ang mga horsemen tay ang mga army nga gin nga gin palagas man iya. Now, ining chariots ni Pharaoh this this is from a from a Hebrew word nga salisim what silingon. This is a three man chariot. Remember, wala pagid sang iban nga countries during that time nga nakagamit sang kabayo o kon chariot sa battle. An Egypt palang. So, in short, they were the strongest army in the world during that time. And ang isa ka chariot, tatlo na ka soldiers ang nagasakay dira. So kung 600 ang chariots ni Pharaoh, all in all ang soldiers na ara dira, 1,800. Not to mention ang horsemen, tig ang mga ang mga foot soldiers. So that's how strong ang army nga nagalagas sa mga Israelites during the time. Well, how about the Israelites? Ano yung ilang sitwasyon? Well, let me tell you that they were approximately 2 to 3 million who went out of Egypt. And tell you what, they are not soldiers. Kung gating ikaw mati, what if nagbato na lang sila? Anyway, 2 million man sila gali. Anong bato sa kagamay ng army ni Pharaoh? Well, they were slaves. They were untrained for war. They were unfit for war. They were undisciplined. And you know what's worse? They're unbelieving. 
hindi sila matinuluuhon, especially sa Diyos nga nag nga nag-send sang plagues nga nakita nila days before, hindi sila matinuluuhon sa Diyos nga nagpagwa sila sa Egypt. And that's the worst. Now maybe you're wondering, diin na mga Israelites during the time, sang ginlaga sila ni Pharaoh, where were they? The Bible would tell us in chapter 14 in verses 2 and verse 9, Yang mga Israelites, they were in camp, meaning nagtulog sila, nag, nag-camp sila in front of a place called Pihahiroth because God commanded them na dito sila makamp. In front of Pihahiroth, between Migdol and the sea, in front of Baal Zephon. Now, maybe in yung mga places, though foreign, alien for you. But let me just uh, mention here that the place Pihahiroth nga ara sa sa kilid sa mga Israelites this is a very steep nga piece of land impassable rocks kung mag-agi ka sa Pihahiroth it is very dangerous especially kung may mga tigulang kung may kabataan tungod nga takladon and ang mga bato nga ari diri grabe katalong in short hindi ni magyan sa piyak naman nila nga side Migdol and Baal Zephon no ano ni ang Migdol and Baal Zephon these are Egyptian garrisons Barracks ini sang mga Egyptian soldiers. And in front of them was Red Sea. Behind them, the strongest army in the world breathing down their necks. They're trapped. Yan natabo ni. How did this happen? Kung masahon mo ang verse 2, it was God who told them to go there. Maybe you're, you're asking, were they out of God's will? Were they out of God's way? Were they out of God's guidance? Nga anatalo pang dan nilang ilang kaugalingon nga ara sa isa kado, hopeless na sitwasyon? O kon, o kon trap? Nga doon hindi na sila kabalok kung anong ilang ngayon on? Well, the answer is no. They were not out of God's way. They were not out of God's will. As a matter of fact, that is exactly the place where God wanted them to be. How can I say that? Because in chapter before ver- chapter 14, in, in chapter 13, verses 21 and 22, we can read there that the pillar of clouds by day, nga naga shade sa ila, kag ang pillar of fire by night, amuni sila ang nag represent sang presence sang ginoo. And kung diin sila ipagadal on sang pillar of fire, kag okon ng sang pillar of cloud, dra man sila makanto. In other words, wala sila naga step ahead. Meaning, it was exactly God who brought them there. It was God who brought them there. God commanded Moses in chapter 14, verse 2, to camp there. So in other words, that is the place, the exact place, where God wanted the Israelites to be. You know what? At this point, mga utod sa ginoo, this is the lesson nga nga learn ko. With all the seemingly hopeless situations sa atong kabuhi, this is the lesson. God does His best work from seemingly hopeless situations. Utod sa ginoo, kung makita mo, kung nasapuan mo ang imong kaugalingon sa buong ara sa isa ka mabudlay na sitwasyon, nga daw hopeless, nga daw trapped ikaw, I want to tell you that God does His best work from seemingly hopeless situations. Seemingly hopeless situations are avenues for us to trust, to trust the Lord, to trust and to hope in the Lord. You know what? The Bible is filled with stories of seemingly hopeless situations. Back in the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve invited sin into a perfect world. Hopeless situation. Joseph, sold by his brothers, hated by his brothers, became a slave in Egypt. Hopeless situation. Moses, cornered in the bank of Red Sea with the strongest army in the world breathing down their necks. Hopeless situation. Gideon, with his 300 men, 300 unfit men against like what? 300,000? Hopeless situation. David was too small. Goliath was too big. Peter was a coward. Paul was in prison. 5,000 men had no food, Lazarus was dead, Timothy was too young, Abraham was too old, the walls of Jericho was too strong. Jesus Christ was humiliated, hanged on the cross, and buried. 
with all the hopes of people during the time. Hopeless situation. But then again, it is during hopeless situations that God does His best work. And so, this morning, the question is, how do we trust God? Paano ko bala saligan ang ginoo sa mga tinion sa akon niya kabuhi na daw ka hopeless? Na daw hindi ko kabalo kung anong akon himoon. Sa mga tinion niya, wala na ko kabalo kung anong mga options ko. How do we trust God in moments like that? Hamba sa atong niya passage, Stand still, fear not, stand still, for today you will see the salvation of the Lord. This is a promise made by God for the Israelites. But this morning, gusto ko kwaon ang principles dere. How do we trust God in seemingly hopeless situations? Remember the word still. Now, himuan ko niya sa acronym. You will start this morning with letter S. And letter S stands for remember the sovereignty of God. Remember God's letter S, sovereignty. You know what? The word sovereignty means complete control. In every hopeless, in every seemingly hopeless and hard situation, we must not forget that ang ginoo naton is still in control. No matter how frustrating, no matter how painful, no matter how hard it gets, our God is still in control. He is still sovereign. You know what? The sovereignty of God, klaro klaro gini siya yung nga butang nga makita naton sa life kaya sa experience ni Moses and as well as the Israelites. So, just to pound, no para nga ma-pound ko lang dere ang ang idea on, on the sovereignty of God. Pagalan tawo naton this morning ang dua ka mga different nga mga events. No first, we will try to look at the sovereignty of God as far as sa experience ni Moses is concerned. Now, sa pagkabata ni Moses, or many years before Moses was born, there was a mother, nga ginbutang niyang iyang son, iyang baby, nga lalaki, in a basket, nga ginbutang niya sa river, sa Mesopotamia. Ang ina nga story, nagsikat na. And ang ina nga baby, nga ginbutang sa basket, was discovered kagin kagin padako siya kagin influence sa isa ka great nga man and later that baby boy became known to be Sargon the Great now who is Sargon the Great he is one of the most famous kings in the ancient near east now anong connect sang sining story remember the time when Moses was born it was the time when when Pharaoh ordered the killing of all the Hebrew boys. Most probably, si Jochebed, ang mother ni Moses, nabatian niya ang story. She must have heard, she must have known the story of Sargon the Great. Kag probably, dito niya nakuha ang idea nga pwede niya ibutang ang iya nga baby nga si Moses in a basket kag palutaw-lutawan sa river. God's sovereignty. Moses was raised in the same home with the same Pharaoh who ordered who ordered the killing of Hebrew, boy, Hebrew boys. Now, how did that happen? Nakapamangkot kayo mo sina? It was Pharaoh nga nag-order nga pamatsyon ang mga Hebrew boys. But then si Moses, a Hebrew, was raised in that same palace kung sa diin nag-istar ang ining a Pharaoh nga nag-order sang sininga killing. Paano na natabo? Well, biblical archaeology would tell us that during the time na si Moses na bata, there was a queen. Ang pangalan sang sini niya queen was Queen Hatshepsut. This this queen, by the name of Hatshepsut, she was a very strong-willed person. Grabe ni siya ka-dominant. She was even more dominant than her father, ang pharaoh during the time. So that is the reason why, paano, si, ang, paano nga si Moses, who is a Hebrew, dito siya nagdako, never harmed sang person yung nag-order sang iya nga, sang iya nga killing. Because she was protected by this queen, who, who is known to be Queen Hatshepsut. Nga, hindi siya matandog because this queen is very strong-willed and she even dominated her father. Kagtungod niya grabe ka dominant ang ini niya queen, gin-order niya ang mga tao nga dapat siya tawagod nga King Hatshepsut and not queen. That's how, that's how strong, that's how dominant this particular um, princess is. So can you see? 
Duka, duka funny nga story, but kung lang tawang gin nato ng history, especially sa life ni Moses, we can see the unseen hand of God, the unseen hand of God's sovereignty working behind the scenes sa life ni Moses mismo. It was no accident that nga ang Israel naglive sila sa difficult nga lives as slaves under sa rulership ni Pharaoh in Egypt. In the accident that Pharaoh would order the killing of the Hebrew boys, in the accident nga si Moses na bata, kagin siya sa mama niya sa basket, and later discover siya sa sining a particular na princess, kagin raise siya sa, sa palace, in the accident nga si Moses na kaangkun sa best nga education as a prince. Because we know the story that Moses later had been used by God to write the first five books of the Bible. You see? Kung nag-look back ka lang sa si mga life, you can see kung paano gin-piece together sa ginoo ang gagmay ng mga detalye sa iyong mga life to work out something for your good. God is sovereign sa life ni Moses and God is sovereign sa iyong mga life even and especially sa mga tiyon yung may mga circumstances ikaw nga ginaagyan. Because God is sovereign, He doesn't do things in random. Nothing is random as far as the sovereign God is concerned. So that's Moses' experience. Now let's try to look at the Israelites' experience of God's sovereignty. The sovereignty of God also means that God is incomparable. That God is superior to any known gods. And I, I want to tell you that the Egyptians during the time, damo-damo sila sa mga gods nga ginasimba. They practice polytheism, meaning damo-damo sila isang different ng mga dios-dios na ginasimba. And they believe niya ang isa ka particular na god, may aral lang na siya, area niya of dominance. Kapati sila yung uh, um, wala sang isa ka god na ginapossess siya ang tanan niya power. That's why they serve multiple gods. And this is the message, ang mensahe nga at ten plagues gid ang ginpadala sang ginoo, is that God wants to convince the Israelites and to convince Pharaoh that God is the authoritative God, that God is the sovereign God, more than sa mga gods na ginaserve nila. So nga, ten plagues, good. Because each plague, gin counter, gin prove sang ginoo, ang, ang gods na ginasiba sa mga Egyptians. Now, let's take, for example, ang first plague. Ang first plague, gin turn sang ginoo, ang Nile River into blood. Now, this is to, to defeat the Egyptian god of the Nile named Happy. Ang mga Egyptians, ginasimba nila ang Nile River. So, gin-turn sang gino ang Nile into blood. But then, we know the story, kung basahon natin ang story, ang mga magicians ni Pharaoh, gin-imitate man nila ang ininga, ang ininga miracle na gin-perform ni Moses. They turn water into blood as well. And so, si Pharaoh wala na-convince. Ang, ang second plague, amun siya ang frogs nga naghalin sa, sa Nile River. This is to defeat the Egyptian goddess named Heket. Egyptian goddess ni siya nga gin-portray ni nila ng ulo ya, paka. Like a frog. Gin-imitate mo sa mga magicians ni Pharaoh nga nag-call out man sila sa mga frogs, frogs from the Nile River. But there's one thing hindi nila ma-imitate. Kung paano, papalagyuhon ang mga paka. Only Moses did that. Si Moses lang ganyan nakahimo sa to. So, ang third nga plague, amun siya ang, ang lice, mga, mga kuto, mga, mga sapat-sapat, halin sa dust of the earth. This is to defeat the Egyptian god of the earth named Jeb. G-E-B. Amun ang time nga hindi na kaya i-duplicate, hindi na kaya sundon. Sang mga magicians, ang ininga, ang ininga miracle. And this time, gin-acknowledge gin nila. They said, this is the finger of God. Amuto ang instance, nga, ang mga magicians ni Pharaoh, they're convinced that the God of Moses, ang God na gina i-worship sa mga Israelites, He is a far more superior God. This is the finger of God. That's what they said. And then the, the fourth plague, Ang fourth plague, amuni ang swarm of flies, damo-damo ng mga langaw. This is to defeat the god of creation and rebirth named Kefri. Amuni siya ang pagportray nila sa sininga god is 
tahong ang ulo ya langaw. Tahong ang ulo ya langaw. And ang ining fourth plague, very interesting, kay tungod niya ng, ang naapiktuhan sa sininga plague, ang mga Egyptians lang. Wala gid sang single nga Israelite nga naapiktuhan sa sininga plague. Meaning, gindro na sang ginoo ang, ang line niya. These, these are my people. So, ang naapiktuhan lang niya ang mga, ang mga Egyptians lang. Ang fifth plague, amuni siya ang death sang cattle, death of livestock. This is to defeat the goddess of love, and protection named Hathor. God, goddess ni siya nga ginasimba sa mga Israelites nga ang, nga ang iya nga, ang iya nga ulo baka. Hathor ilang atawag. Ang sixth nga plague, plague amun ni siya ang boils, mga hubag, mga sores. This is, this is to defeat the goddess of medicine and peace nga ginasimba sa mga Egyptians named Isis. And sa sininga plague, ang mga Egyptians lang man ang naapiktuhan. The magicians, ang mga magicians nga nag-try nag mag-imitate sa mga, sa mga miracles na gina-perform ni Moses, during the time nga nag-plague ang boils, kang sores, absent sila. You know why? Tungod nga they themselves were affected sa sininga plague and they cannot do anything about it. Ang seventh nga plague, amunin ang hail, no? nag-ulan sort of kalayo. This is to defeat the Egyptian god, goddess of the sky, named Nut, N-U-T. Ang eighth na plague, swarm of locust from the sky. No, mga, mga locust. This is to defeat the Egyptian god of, of the storm and disorder, named Seth. So after some hail, nagkalasunog ang mga, ang mga tanong, may gamay nga nabilin, gintang kaon naman sa mga locust. Ubos gid ang ubos gid ang mga tanom nga tanom sa mga Egyptians. This threatened their crops. This threatened their economy. But then, hardened Japan ang heart ni Pharaoh, even even after this. And and the next plague, amuni siya ang ninth plague, amuni ang three days of complete darkness. This plague is to defeat the Egyptian god of the sun named Ra. The sun, other than, than Pharaoh himself, is the most worshipped. No, grabe ni ang pagsimba nila sa adlaw. The most worshipped God in Egypt. And darkness, as far as the Egyptians are concerned, ang darkness was a representation of death. It is a representation of judgment. Representation of hopelessness. And sa entire three days na wala sang kasanag, it gave the signal na ang Diyos ni Moses is far superior than their god named Ra. And their gods and goddesses cannot do anything to elevate, to alleviate their situation. And then the tenth and the last plague, the death of the firstborn. You know what? The Egyptians worshipped Pharaoh as God. Pharaoh as the ultimate power in Egypt. God sent the tenth plague to defeat the superior power in Egypt, namely Pharaoh himself. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was worshipped by the Egyptians because he was considered to be the greatest Egyptian god. It was believed that he was actually the son of Ra, the son of the god of the sun, and manifest in the flesh. Kagsang napatay ang firstborn ni Pharaoh, that is to give the message that God is far more superior. That the God of Moses is more sovereign than their gods. Wala ko kabalo. Maybe ang isaman sa mga purposes ang ginoo nga agin padalayin niya ang ten plagues was to convince the Israelites nga nagasimba man sa mga Egyptian gods and goddesses. And now God has has positioned himself in a position nga hindi gid ma-deny that he is superior he is sovereign. He is more authoritative. He is more powerful than these known gods na ginasimba nila. So in conclusion, there's no denying that the God of the Bible, the God of Moses, the God of the Israelites, and our God is a sovereign God. When they were attacked, sa ginalagas na sila sa mga Egyptian armies, ang hambal ni Moses sa ila, do not fear. Stand still. 
And by standing still, gusto ko emphasize paano mag stand still, how to trust God. Rem remember that He is sovereign. Remember that our God, that this God that we serve is far more superior than anyone. So situations in life can escalate very quickly from bad to worse. Kung may mga moments in mga kabuhi that you feel trapped, that you feel like you are in a hopeless situation like the Israelites, remember to remember to be still. Letter S, remember that God is sovereign. God is sovereign. And as God has been sovereign in the life of Moses and the people of Israel, God is sovereign in your life and in my life. Wala sang event, wala sang butang si imo nga kabuhi, nga wala ang ginoo na kabalo. Wala sang butang, wala sang kasakit, nga ma-experiensyahan mo sa si imo nga kabuhi, nga wala naglabay sa sovereign nga kamot sang aton nga Diyos. Utod sa ginoo, because God is sovereign, no one is born an accident. Maybe ari ka diri subong and nag-wonder ka, nag-struggle ka, nag-wrestle ka sa thought nga accident ka lang. Hindi ka ginhungod nga, hindi, hindi hungod nga nagbusong imo nga mama sa imo. Well, let me tell you, because God is sovereign, no one is an accident. No one is an accident. You are not an accident. You are not suffering for nothing because God is sovereign. Because God is sovereign, your pain is not for nothing. Your losses in life is not for nothing. Your grieving is not for nothing. Your prayer is not for nothing. Your hope in God is not for nothing. Because God is sovereign, you can trust that He, that he will work something good out of your seemingly hopeless situation. And lastly, because God is sovereign, you can rest in Him. You can stand still even when situation seems to be hopeless. Sickness, rest in Him, trust Him. Is it, is it a failing marriage? Entrust your marriage to Him. Is it your struggle with your unsaved loved ones? Keep begging Him. Keep pleading to God. Is it failing business? Trust Him. The answer will come. The answer will come sa tanan-tanan natin yung mga questions and sa tanan natin yung mga struggles. But only, but only in His time. So in the meantime, trust God with everything you've got. You know why? Because He is seldom early. We know the story. Ginalaw anay sang ginoo nga magpalapit yun ang mga Egyptians. Gin-divide niya ang Red Sea, gin-palabay niya ang mga, ang mga Israelites. Pagsunod sa mga Egyptians, gin-close ang ginoo. Trust God in the meantime sa imo nga seemingly hopeless situation because God is seldom early. Tagutod sa Ginoo. Ang beauty sa sovereignty sa Ginoo can be appreciated more in the finale, not in the intro. So trust God sa ligigit ang Ginoo hasta sa katapusan so that when you look back, it will make sense. So that it will make sense. Well, we know the story of J Joseph, hated by his brother, but later he became second in command. Gideon won without drawing a single sword. Goliath's head was on the plate. Peter became a rock. Paul rejoiced. Twelve baskets full were left. Lazarus was just joking. Timothy built a church. Abraham built a family. The wall of Jericho fell down. The Red Sea parted and Jesus Christ was resurrected and is right now sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, beloved in the Lord, are you in a hopeless situation right now? Trust God for He is seldom early. Trust God because God does His best work from seemingly hopeless situation. Shall we pray? Dear God, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reminder from your word that it is in the most difficult of times and trials niyang imo ginoong pagpalangga, ang imo gagahong, mas nagashine brighter. Father, in every seemingly hopeless situation that we are in or we will be in in the future, remind us to be still. 
Remind us to first remember of how you've been sovereign sa amon nga life. That we are here today despite sa amon ginoong nga mga kapalpakan sa past because you've been sovereignly good. Because you are committed to work out everything for our good. And for that reason, we can rest. We can stand still because we know that our God is superior, our God is supreme, our God is sovereign. So will you bless your people now with this thought, with this lesson, that whatever it is that they will be facing today, you are still on the throne. You are still in control. Will you please bless your people now. This is our prayer. In Jesus' most mighty name we pray. Amen.